some um, of the rapid environmental change that our planet is experiencing is attributable to human activities. Well, biologists are faced with an important research challenge, and that is determining how this rapid environmental change will influence disease ecology. And for amphibians, um, infectious diseases are associated with many cases of population decline. And uh, pictured here are uh, some different uh, disease agents that uh, affect amphibians. So you can see uh, there's a fungus up here, a virus, uh, a bacterium, and a worm or helminth. Uh, Saprolegnia is a, a saprobic slash parasitic water mold in the phylum Oomycota, not in the uh, kingdom of fungi, but it does act ecologically uh, pretty much like a fungus would. And on the left is a uh, zoosporangium. That's a uh, that's a um, involved in asexual reproduction, and it produces primary zoospores, which They insist and give rise to secondary zoospores. And those secondary zoospores, if they land on a suitable substrate, can uh, grow into a mycelium with hyphae. And um, you know, that, that's the um, white fuzz that uh, macroscopically is what you see with saprolegnia. Uh, on the right, uh, there are some structures uh, involved in sexual reproduction, but I'm not going to go into that. Uh, we are we know uh, from previous work that uh, saprolegnia can cause mortality of amphibian embryos, and this is what it looks like on um, amphibian eggs. These are ambisiba, ambisima macrodactylum long-toed salamander eggs up in the high cascades, and there. Um, before we started this study, there was some evidence consistent with saprolegnia causing mortality of amphibian larvae, but no experimental work that really showed uh, uh, that the saprolegnia could actually cause mortality at the larval life stage. So, uh, uh, disease doesn't occur sort of in the vacuum. Uh, in amphibians, um, as well as in uh, many other taxa uh, of hosts, you, uh, you can get uh, synergy between a particular environmental stressor and a particular disease agent. So uh, eutrophication and pesticides have, um, and also temperature, although I don't have it on the slide. Those three factors have been identified to interact with uh, a disease agent, um, you know, interact synergistically with a disease agent to affect amphibians. And here uh, I have pond drying and uh, you know, possible interactions between multiple pathogens. I have question marks there because for those factors, the stressor pathogen synergism hasn't, hasn't been um, demonstrated experimentally clearly. Uh, so those are, uh, for them, the, the data is still inconclusive. So uh, here are uh, uh, stressors uh, that have been demonstrated to act synergistically with saprolegnia to affect amphibians. And they include UVB, climatic cycles, uh, silt also. And for interspecific aggression and uh, temperature, the, you know, I have the question marks there because you know, there, there are, um, the data are still inconclusive. They're, they haven't been shown clearly to uh, act synergistically with saprolegnia in experiments. 
So nitrates uh, stress are important on a global scale, and the most important uh, human sources of it are anthropogenic sources of it are uh, uh, fertilizer used in agriculture, um, humans, uh, human and livestock waste specifically, and uh, nitrate can contribute to eutrophication and I'm going to get pretty sophisticated with the microphone now and move it a little bit. Okay. Uh, it, nitrate can contribute to eutrophication. Um, it is also toxic to many organisms. It can reach toxic levels in aquatic systems, and it's toxic to many organisms, including amphibians and humans. So the research question we wanted to answer with the study was, does nit do nitrate and saprolegnia, uh, oh, does nitrate increase the susceptibility of amphibian larvae to mortality from saprolegnia? And this was perhaps, well, this was a good start, but after the study, is, uh, well, I wouldn't really frame my conclusions in, in uh, this uh, manner, and you'll see why. So we used three um, amphibian species. We used the larval stages of red-legged frogs, uh, Pacific tree frogs, and northwest, northwestern salamanders. Uh, pictured here are the uh, are, uh, adults of these three species. So we used a three by two fully factorial experiment in the laboratory, and we had three different nitrate treatments uh, with nominal concentrations of zero, five, and 20 milligrams per liter, or parts per million. Um, we crossed those with two saprolegnia treatments, and that, uh, the saprolegnia treatment was three hemp seeds inoculated with saprolegnia, and the control for that was three sterile hemp seeds. And you can see on the left, there's a hemp seed with uh, some fuzz growing on it, and that fuzz is saprolegnia. And that's a tadpole right there, just a uh, uh, Pacific tree frog tadpole, just for some size reference. Yeah. We got the um, saprolegnia from a water sample taken from this pond on the Oregon coast. Um, we also got the um, egg masses for the rana, uh, for the red-legged frogs and the northwestern salamanders that we used in this study from this pond here. We got eggs uh, for the Pacific tree frogs from uh, pond uh, a little bit south of this site because there, um, this um, pond right here where we got the saprolegnia did not have, um, I did not find uh, Hyla Vigila, or I didn't, get, didn't find Pacific tree frog egg masses there. Um, so it, they weren't abundant, at least they may have been absent. So, after one week, um, we, we ran the experiment for one week, and um, for red-legged frogs, um, survival is on the y-axis, and the nitrate treatments are on the x-axis. Uh, black bars uh, represent uh, control treatments, and white bars represent uh, saprolegnia treatments. So when we didn't add nitrate, um, Let's see. In the absence of nitrate on the, on the left, you can um, see that uh, survival was significantly lower in the saprolegnia treatment control, uh, the saprolegnia treatment control uh, compared to the control treatment. So that's evidence of uh, saprolegnia causing mortality when nitrate was not added. Uh, when nitrate was added in either the low nitrate treatment or the high nitrate treatment, uh, we didn't detect any difference between the control and saprolegnia treatments in terms of survival. So overall, we didn't find any direct effects of nitrate. The only effect of nitrate that we found was, a, uh, was that when we didn't add it there, uh, well, when we did add nitrate, uh, there was not a saprolegnia effect. So 
That was a less than additive interaction that we were not expecting. And you can see here, uh, when we did add nitrate, survival was always lower than in the treatment where they got neither nitrate nor saprolegnia, which is consistent with nitrate having direct effects on survival, but those differences were not statistically significant. This is a tadpole that died in the saprolegnia treatment, um, a red-legged frog tadpole that died in the saprolegnia treatment of, from actually a different experiment. So for northwestern salamander larvae, uh, survival was high across the board, and we didn't find any treatment effects. And same story for Pacific tree frogs, survival was high across the board, and we didn't find any treatment effects on the, them either. So for red-legged frogs, we, um, we do have evidence that saprolegnia can cause mortality at the larval stage for them. Um, but uh, we didn't find evidence of a synergism between nitrate and saprolegnia. In fact, we found the opposite of a synergism, uh, less than additive interaction. And we don't know what, that what the mechanism for this less than additive interaction was, but um, nitrate may have caused mortality of the saprolegnia zoospores, which would have effectively reduced the dose that the red-legged frogs were being exposed to, or that all the animals in the experiment were being exposed to. Um, uh, also, uh, the nitrate may have caused the saprolegnia to switch from a parasitic lifestyle to more of a saprobic one, which also would have reduced the effective dose of the pathogen. So with this study, we found a less than additive interaction. And uh, uh, I told you about these synergisms that have been found. And there are also cases in which the stressor and the pathogen uh, were tested, but where no interaction was, was detected. And so uh, what I think is really a challenge now when we're dealing with stressors and pathogens is to uh, figure out what's controlling uh, how these things interact, what controls the way that the stressor and the pathogen is going to interact. I'd like to acknowledge these people and these funding uh, so, uh, agencies, including DAPTAF, and I'd also I'd like to acknowledge the funding that uh, D.D. Olson has given me for um, other aspects of my research as well. <laughs>